Right, so yes. uh, what are you showing here? Yes, so I'm Stefan Santibo from o Open Synergy. What we're showing here is um, a software solution to safely integrate Linux and Android for automotive infotainment systems. Um, in this specific demonstrate, we're showing Android running on a Freescale IDOTMX53 processor. So there's an ARM Cortex A8 core on there. So it's uh, for the car? It's for the car, it's for automotive. And, and today, many OEMs and tier ones, they're very interested in taking advantage of open source solutions like GenEV, Linux, and Android for automotive applications. The problem is that, that these solutions um, do not satisfy automotive requirements. They don't boot quickly enough. There are security concerns, safety concerns. They don't have the real-time properties that are required. And that becomes a problem when these Linux and Android systems are indirect, interacting with the other vehicle systems. Yeah. And so we have a solution for that. The solution is called uh, Cocos. And what we do technically is that we have a microkernel running on the Cortex A8. On top of that here we're running a virtualized Android. And then next to Android we can run in parallel um, a real-time Autozar partition. So Autozar is the most important standard in automotive for the communication over with us. So what do you communicate over the uh, Autozar, what do you call it? Yes. Uh, through Autozar, uh, we communicate with all of the other vehicle systems. So all of the signals that are sent or received from the other vehicle systems are communicated over there. I can just show a small example here. So we've built a small application. It's a navigation system. Um, and what I should, so this here is the head unit. This here on the right, my PC, represents the rest of the vehicle. And what you can already see here is that the Autozar is sending out in real time every second a CAN message on the CANs of the vehicle. So I'm doing this to show that on one processor we have Autozar running independently from Android. So here we have now an Android app that has started, which is a navigation system for an electric vehicle. And now I'm going to send, uh, simulate the canvas of the vehicle, um, and I'm going to send information about the status of the battery to this um, navigation system. Here you see the status of the battery, you see the position of the car, the green circle shows how far I can still drive with my battery. So it shows communication between Android and the other, vehicle, the other systems in the vehicle, for example the battery, and the communication is safe because Android cannot directly interact with the canvas, all of this has to go through Autozar. The kernel in Linux cannot see directly the, the vehicle bus. Nice, so you, you have to virtualize Android. Yes, we have virtualized Android to do this. You have to do it like that. Um, that is our approach, and I, I think it's a, it's, it's a very sensible approach because it makes it possible to integrate Android with other applications on one single processor. All right, and uh, there's an IMX under there? There's an IMX53 under there. I can demonstrate that although it's on one processor, Android is independent from Autozar because if you move to the right here, I can send a message to my CAN bus to just shut down Linux and restart this. So you see here every second Autozar is running. Now I'm going to restart um, Android. You see here that Autozar keeps running in real time. And if you move to the left here, you will see that Linux has been shut down and is restarting. So nice. I'm really independently running Android and real time stuff on one. On one is this the first time that the Android is secure in a car? As far as I know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the first time that we have uh, integrated Autozar and Android on one processor, yes. All right. I'm not aware of another solution that has these both components. Exactly. So, uh, is the graphics and all that fully hardware accelerated in virtualized Android? Or it's more like for some types of... For example, when you open this one... Yeah. In this, is in this it full version, speed or not yet? In this version, it's all done in software. Yeah. Um, but we also have the hardware graphics acceleration working already, but it's not integrated in this demonstration yet. So These are one of the trickier parts, but it's possible and it works and it's already working. But here it's all done, all the rendering is done in software. So how soon are all the cars going to come with Android virtualized? Oof, uh, okay, we're not just supporting Android, we're supporting Android and Linux. Um, and I think there's a big debate in the industry, will, will the industry move to Android, to Linux, GenEV or other closed solutions, Windows for example. I think in China there are already cars on the streets with Android, with factory installed Android, and I think it will continue there in China very, very quickly. In Europe we will see Linux-based solutions very soon, in the next years to come. Android, I'm not sure. It takes a little bit of time to get the whole thing done, to get the whole thing certified or what it's called. Yes, I think um, the automotive industry is very quality aware and they have relatively long development processes. If somebody decides in an OEM we want to have Android, it will be in the car three years later maybe, according to the European United States standards. Yeah. So we can find more information at your... Uh, yes, exactly. So Open I'm from Open Synergy. Uh, let me see if I have my email address on here. The contact information is right there. You can All go right. to our website, send us an email and we'll be happy to give you more information about this. Thanks.